वी आर इन द फाइनल चैप्टर ऑफ द ह्यूमन इवोल्यूशन स्टोरी फ्रॉम फिफ्टी थाउजेंड टू फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड ईयर्स अगो ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट आइस एज अर्थ क्लाइमेट स्वंग बिटवीन कूलर एंड वार्मर पीरियड्स पंक्चुएटेड बाई ओकेजनल आइस मेल्टिंग इवेंट्स द स्पीसीज ऑफ होमोसेपियंस विथ स्टूड इट ऑल नाउ इट ऑक्यूपाइड एवरी कॉन्टिनेंट ऑफ द अर्थ द एडेप्टेशन एंड स्किल्स इट एक्वायर्ड थ्रू जनरेशन इन द लास्ट सेवन मिलियन ईयर्स पे ब्रिट्स वे टू रूल दिस प्लानट एंड बियॉन्ड हाउ हैज बीन आर जर्नी इन द लास्ट फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ईयर्स लेट्स फाइंड आउट इन दिस वीडियो Hi friends this is Akhil Anand Singh this is the concluding video of the series hominins to humans this series is dedicated to topic 1.6 of the UPSC anthropology optional paper 1 i hope you have seen all the earlier five videos of the series if not do consider watching them to establish a good command over all the points under the topic 1.6 we saw in the earlier videos that homo sapiens evolved from african homo heidelbergensis some 300000 years ago and they migrated from africa to middle east to europe and asia today we will be concentrating on the three types or groups or clans of homo sapiens who lived between 50 to 10000 years ago from now these three groups are cro-magnons grimaldi men and chancellor men the archaeological footprints left behind by cro-magnons far exceed those by any other group of humans living in the similar time range The name Cro-Magnon comes from the name of the place in France from where their fossils were discovered in 1868. Cro-Magnons were the first early Homo sapiens to settle in Europe. They lived in Europe, Asia and parts of Africa between 45,000 years ago to 10,000 years ago. Around 50,000 years ago, Europe was also occupied by Homo neanderthals, but Cro-Magnons had much higher population due to their higher fertility and survival rates. Cro-Magnon men were between 5 feet 5 inch to 5 feet 9 inch tall and women had the height of 5 feet to 5 feet 4 inches. Their brain capacity was between 1400 to 1550 cubic centimeters. They were physically similar to present day Europeans, West Asians and North Americans. They had globular brain case, a non-prognathic face, gracile brow ridges and well defined chin similar to modern humans. But they were more robust and had bigger teeth than us. their brain capacity was also larger than ours compared to neanderthals cro-magnons were less robust but taller cro-magnons had a long skull which is also referred to as dolichocranial skull their cheek bones were large and protruding they had long high and narrow nose their four arms were longer than the upper arms initially they were darker than the modern europeans the natural selection for lighter skin began only after 30000 years ago from now Cro-Magnon fossils were discovered by Louis Lartet in the area called Cro-Magnon Rock Shelter in France in the year 1868 where several skulls and skeletons were found. Let's talk about Cro-Magnon housing, clothing and language. Cro-Magnons were the first humans to make permanent houses. They also built temporary huts while on move. Stone caves were their permanent homes which were large and had marked areas for kitchen, butchering and sleeping. In Russian plains they made huts out of mammoth bones. Cro-magnon clothes were made of skin of large animals and also of plant fibers. They stitched the clothes with bone needles. They even dyed their clothes with plant-based dye. They progressed from merely trying to survive to being concerned about their appearances. They used beads for body decoration. They created necklaces out of shell and ivory. Did Cro-magnons have clear speech capability? Cro-magnons had the same vocal apparatus that is present in us. They spoke clearly. The gene FOXP2 that is related with the neurological prerequisites for speech and language had already evolved some 100,000 years ago from now. They spoke in some proto language. Cro-magnon society art and music. Cro-magnons often lived longer than 50 years. Longer life provided opportunities for a stronger societal bond. Men hunted large animals in groups. Women gathered nuts, plants and fruits. They were also able to hunt small animals. Women observed plants closely. Experts believe that it must be them who started agriculture later. Monogamy was not widely practiced in ancient times. Switch from matriarchy to patriarchy must have happened later. Cro-magnons were first humans to create intricate art. Their caves had hand stencils and paintings of animals and geometric patterns. They must have used lamps for creating artwork in dark caves 
They also created Venus figurines who depicted pregnant women. Some figurines had hybrid human and animal creatures. Cro-Magnons were also able to create musical instruments. Whistles and flutes made of bones have been found at their fossil sites. They also created drums and bull roarers. Bull roarers were used to communicate over long distances. Cro-Magnon rituals trade and domestication of dogs. Cro-Magnons practiced deliberate burial procedures. The dead bodies were covered with oka. They placed day-to-day -day items with the dead in their graves. They believed in afterlife. They also had ceremonies on good hunt or on boys becoming men. In the late Paleolithic age, they developed trade. They had expansive trade routes of long distances. They sourced some raw material from the places more than 200 kilometers away. The cultural practices of creating Venus figurines stretched over 2000 kilometers. Domestication of early dogs was a symbiotic hunting relationship between Crow Magnus and the ancestors of the modern day dogs. Dog skeletons have been found in the graves in Siberia and Germany in the time as old as 30,000 years ago from now. Cro-Magnons were great at making complex tools. They used specialized tools for hunting, fishing and sieving. The tools were made of bone, antler, wood and selected stones. These materials were sometimes sourced from long distances. Their tools included spears, spear throwers, harpoons and the tools used for grinding and crushing. For weapons, Cro-Magnons created spear points using bones and antlers. These materials were readily available and they had great compressive strength. Before moving on to two other groups of Homo sapiens, the Grimaldi man and the Chancellor man, I would like to add two more things about Cro-Magnons. Cro-Magnons lived in close proximity of Neanderthals and DNA analysis suggests that Cro-Magnons interacted and even interbred with Neanderthals. That's why the modern European and even Asian population has 1-4% to of Neanderthal genes. The second point is, modern scientific literature recommends using the term early European modern humans or anatomically modern humans to refer to the Cro-Magnon people. The more generic modern scientific name accommodates the fact that Cro-Magnons were really widespread and they were not restricted to any specific area of Europe. During the time 45,000 years ago to 38,000 years ago, another group of Homo sapiens were living in areas around Italy. They have been given the name Grimaldi Man. The name Grimaldi has come from the financiers of the excavation expedition, the Principality of Monaco. Monaco is an autonomous city-state at the Mediterranean coast. The Principality of Monaco is ruled by the House of Grimaldi. And that's how the name has been given to Grimaldi Man. Grimaldi man fossils were very different from the other Homo sapien fossils of the similar time range in Europe. Hence they were given a different name. They had some negroid features and some European features as well. The British anatomist and anthropologist Arthur Keith concluded that Grimaldi people were an intermediate race between the Africans and the Europeans. Grimaldi people were short and slender. Their height was about 5 feet 3 inches and the brain capacity was between 1250 to 1450 cubic centimeters. Their skull was long, narrow and high. Such skulls in anatomy literature is known as hyperdolicocephalic. Their forehead was well developed. It had a slight bulge in front of it. Grimaldi man's nose was large and broad with a low bridge. They had a narrow cheekbone. Their lower jaw was more protruding than the upper jaw and they had large teeth. The chin of Grimaldi man was underdeveloped. The fossils of Grimaldi man were discovered by Canon D. Willy Neve in Ventimiglia, Italy in 1901. Two skeletons belonging to a woman past 50 and a boy of 16 or 17 years of age were obtained. Chancellor man is named after the place Chancellor in France where their fossils were discovered. From their physical attributes and cultural traits, they are thought to have close resemblance with modern Eskimos who live in Alaska, Canada and Greenland though some experts argue it. Experts who consider the Chancellor people to be the ancestors of modern Eskimos and Mongoloids believe that Chancellor men crossed the Bering Strait to reach Alaska and Canada from Russia. Chancellor man fossils were discovered by Fuchs Hardy and Jean Leo Testat in 1888 in Chancellor France. They found the skeleton of an adult male of age between 55 to 65 years. The long and narrow skull of Chancellor man resembles the crania of Eskimos. They had a sagittal keel on top of their skull. Sagittal keel is an area on top of the skull where the left and the right portions of the skull bones join. 
They had moderately developed brow ridges. Their forehead was mostly flat with a slight bulge towards the top. They had a longish face having prominent cheekbones. Their nose was long and narrow but the nasal bridge was broken. They had a short body with a muscular build. Their feet were large and there was a big gap between the first toe and the second. We have reached the end of our journey encompassing the history of 7 million years of mankind. Before ending this series, I am giving you the link of an excellent interactive web page where you can play around and learn about the most important milestones in human evolution. I am also giving the link in the description box. I hope you found this series to be engaging and richly rewarding. Thank you.